Fine dining isn't cheap, so it's critical that you make the most out of your experience and order the right stuff. If you're looking to save money, protect your sensitive stomach, or eat ethically, here are a few fancy menu items it's probably best to just avoid. Today's seafood is... <laughs> Today's seafood is flounder. <laughs> you don't see veal on too many menus these days, and for good reason. Veal is one of the cruelest foods you can eat. Merry Christmas. A choo-choo train? No, it's five pounds of veal. It might have a reputation as being super tender and flavorful, but there's a horrible reason it comes out that way. It comes from a young male dairy calf who, from the industry point of view, isn't useful for anything later in life. Most male dairy calves become veal at the end of their 8-16 to 16 week lives. Those short lifespans are spent confined to tiny veal crates built to restrict their movement, which leads to more tender flesh. Plus, they're being fed formula deliberately low in nutrients to make them anemic, which makes the color of the meat more desirable. It may taste delicious, but a backstory like that is hard to stomach. Oysters are regarded as being just as luxurious as lobster, caviar, or champagne, with the added fun factor of risking serious illness or death from eating them. You might assume that eating raw oysters from a fine dining restaurant should lessen the risk of illness. But you'd be wrong. An FDA report in 2015 showed that reputable restaurants are by no means protected. He was a bold man that first ate an oyster. I believe that was Jonathan Swift. Are we naming them now? Your best bet with oysters, then, is eating them cooked. If you must eat them raw, purchase them only from specialist establishments, such as oyster bars, and accept that just because you're paying a lot of money for them doesn't mean you're guaranteed to keep them down. As with any seafood, try to get them near the source, too, if only for quality's sake. One of the biggest temptations when you're going out to a fancy restaurant is to get something extra special you wouldn't normally make for yourself at home. Mussels definitely fits the bill for most, but experts say you should be wary. Chef Mary Dumont told Insider she never ever opts for mussels, saying, I know people love them and I'm meticulous about their storage and care if I serve them, but all it takes is one bad mussel and you're down for the count. There's a whole bunch of nasty ways a bad mussel can take you out, including potentially fatal paralytic shellfish poisoning, which impacts the nervous system as soon as half an hour after eating a contaminated morsel. There's also the more common ailment, massive gastrointestinal distress. The late Anthony Bourdain, a famously adventurous eater, was very cautious with mussels, once writing, I don't eat mussels in restaurants unless I know the chef or have seen with my own eyes how they store and hold their mussels for service. If you know for a fact that the restaurant makes its own pasta from scratch, by all means, order the pasta. But if the place isn't known for its noodles and you suspect they're from a box, it's best just to order something else. Why? because you're paying a pretty penny for a plate of food that costs, well, pennies to make. This is especially true at high-end joints that offer a few pasta dishes as an alternative for family members that go along for dinner but don't like more specialized offerings. Look at it this way. Customers that order a simple pasta dish aren't paying as much for their seat as the ones ordering truffles. So in order to counteract that revenue loss, those pasta dishes are often marked up more. In fact, they're marked up a lot more. Market Watch says pasta dishes at seafood restaurants, for example, can be marked up as much as 20%. And given how much a box of dried pasta costs at the store, you're better off saving it for a night in. For four years, researchers from several universities carried out a study where they took samples of fish from Los Angeles restaurants and then performed a DNA test to determine if people were getting what they paid for. High-end sushi restaurants were found swapping one fish for another 47% of the time. And when it came to halibut and red snapper, consumers were getting a substitute fish a surprising 100% of the time. The researchers added that it was unclear whether or not the mislabeling was intentional. To top it off, MarketWatch points out that if you're in an area where the fish isn't local, part of what you're paying for that high price dish is overnight shipping costs. Order something more easily identifiable and local to make the most out of your fine dining experience.